let's begin. So now, so Jin is tested. Angels are tested. Who's going to be tested now? Adam, of course, right? And obviously, Adam is not going to be tested alone. When there's a man, you need a woman, right? Okay, so, uh, so, Ad, so God creates a wife for Adam, and he puts them both in paradise. And he says, you know what? Now, this is your paradise. You don't have to work. No taxes, no nothing. Go eat and enjoy yourself. But one tree, leave it alone. Don't go near that. Okay? And then God did not give a uh, reason. Okay, so I think the sister wants to join. Yep. Is she here for the presentation? Okay. All right. Anyway, so basically, uh, yeah, so ba just don't go near the tree. <laughs> Right? And did God give a reason, don't go near the tree, because you're going to get fats or acids or cholesterol or whatever? Right? You don't need that, right? Because Adam is going to submit to God. He's not like Satan, oh, I know this thing is very good, you know? I can have a little bit of it, I'm going to get drunk, right? And, and arguments like that. So basically, just don't worry about this tree, eat and drink and enjoy. Fair enough. They continued doing that. Now, the enemy is still there. Obviously, God informed Adam, you know, watch out for this guy. Don't let him deceive you, right? And then he comes in as he challenged God. He's going to come in. Whoa, this tree, man, this is good. You, get, you eat from there, you're going to live forever. You're going to become like angels, right? Did he say that one time? No, he consistently said that and kept saying that, kept saying that until Adam and Eve ate from it, okay? So in Quranic scripture, we don't blame Eve. There's no special blame on Eve, okay? If there's a special blame, then it's on Adam as the, you know, the leader of the family, okay? We can talk about that later. But anyway, so if there's any special blame, it's on Adam. But other than that, each individual is responsible for himself, okay? So he ate from that, and he made a mistake, just how we make mistakes, right? And uh, just like how Satan was consistent with him, he is consistent with us. Right? But at the end of the day, I'm responsible for my choices. You're responsible for your choices. Adam was responsible for his choice. I am not responsible for the choices of Adam or my parents or anybody else. Okay, so he did that. Now what? Right? So you come into this and so basically, now you have details like, you know, their uh, clothes from the paradise were taken away and they started hiding themselves. Those are like, you know, details not too important. But what is important now is that God said, well, I, I told you not to listen to Satan and not to eat from the tree, right? Now the interesting thing comes. Reaction from Adam. It's like, oh, I forgot. He didn't remind me. He told it's good and it's like nutritious and this and that. And, right? You should have put a sign. Why even create the tree in the first place? You know, just throw the tree out, right? Freedom of speech, freedom of choice, none of that. He said, um, he, well, they both said, right, Adam and Eve both said, O oh, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. We have wronged ourselves, and if you are not to forgive us, we will be from the losers. Okay? And God forgave them. Okay? They were sincere in seeking forgiveness, and God forgave them. Right? So that's the difference between men and Satan. Right? This is the attitude of a believer when you commit mistake versus when you are an arrogant soul. Okay, now, it's about us, right? So how did we get here? So after that was all over, this is what God told Adam. He said, All of you get down to earth, including Adam, Eve, and Satan, okay? Okay, so if my guidance comes to you, okay? Remember that part, we're going to come back to it. If my guidance comes to you, whoever follows it will have no fear and no anxiety. What's the difference between fear and anxiety? Fear of future. Anxiety of what has already happened. Right? So any painful thing that has happened to you, as a believer, you know that was under the decree of God. And that has a wisdom that you and I may not know. Right? So the more you have that faith, 
the more stronger you will be and the less grief you would have and the less afraid you will be of death because you're going towards your Lord. But, now this is a bitter part, right? I gotta be true and mention that as well. So God said, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارُ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ But the ones who disbelieve, belie, reject, and deny our signs, they are the people of hell and they will be in it forever. Okay? So now we talk about who is Allah? Who is the God we're talking about? So the story, the beginning is done. If you have any questions about that, we can take it now and then we'll move on with who is Allah. Good question. Okay. So uh, that's a literal translation, right? So in Arabic, uh, God used the pronoun of plural. Right? So just like you know in English as well, when king or royal family is writing a decree or mentioning that for power, for might, they use the pronoun we. Right? It is still representing one God. Okay? Good observation. All right, so shall we move on? Okay, so who is a 